Hello guys and girls, you join me here today at Chickborough Fisheries in Essex. First time on this venue. Uh, I'll be doing 24 hours with my friend Carl, hoping for some tench. My mate done some research um, and there's a good head of tench in here apparently. Uh, we're at the back end of the lake, uh, as you can probably see there, there's a tree line, there's plenty of islands and a bit of deep water here. We started off by walking around the complex uh, with the deep pro and swims that we could get in, so on the back lake and on this lake, and my friend said, no, let's fish this back bit, he was really confident on it. So, um, baits that we'll be fishing with today, I've got a feeder rod with some two mil pellets, and I've soaked these with sweet corn liquid, adding stuff like casters, chop worm, dead maggots, uh, and I'll be fishing a method feeder. There's a tree, tree line just here, and I'm just like on the edge of that tree line. So that's what I'm gonna be doing you know, during the day, trying to get some attention that way. Uh, a few carp subscribers, I have got a carp brought out with uh, cell boily um, and a little uh, sweet corn pop-up. I'll put that right on the edge. My friend said, no, he feels it's too early. I personally disagree. I think the carp will be moving around. It has been cold in the last few days, which is probably why he's saying it. That aside, the core of my pond is certainly active and certainly feeding. So fingers crossed over the next 24 hours we can show you a fish or two. Weather conditions, as you might see, it is pretty much overcast. We've just had quite a downpour. Um, but it is a south southwesterly wind, so I think the wind's in our favour. So, fingers crossed, we can make something happen. So, stay tuned, let's see how it goes. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you my swim in more detail. So if I walk this way, so this is the tree line that I've got my method feeder. Chuck some chopworm, maggot, all sorts down there. Um, and that's obviously where I'll be trying to target potential close range. Quite a depth, quite an early shelf. Apparently this has been dredged out over the last few years, creating a nice channel. And then as you can see, this tree line, oh, this tree line all along here, um, which goes down to about two and a half, three foot. So I've got a carp rod, one set up at the moment, just on the edge of that tree line. So fingers crossed, I'm fishing cell with that, with lots of uh, chop cell boily, PVA bag, and uh, flick some boilies over the top as well. So let's see what happens. Well guys, it didn't take too long. Just wader, let me get a bit closer. Five pound, four ounce tench. Look at that beautiful fish. Screamed off under the tree there. Let's get it back and see if we can get another. There you go, Carl's in next. Look at that tench. Beautiful. Gorgeous. First How big? Tench for about five years. There you go, and his PB as well. Lovely. Let's get some more. Hey. Look at that. How big was it? Seven. Seven pound. What a slab. Awesome. Yo, that's been lid. <laughs> Very nice. Here we go then. Tench number two. Literally just lost one under that tree. Let's give her away another female. Five pound eight. Look at that fish. Let's get rid of that. Absolutely gorgeous. Who could not love a tench? Absolutely beautiful fish. Well, as day one draws to a close, had two tench and lost one and my friend Carl there has had a tench and I believe four bream he regrets spotting out anyway today, tonight's tactics uh, I'm gonna have two carp rods one which I've got tight to the to the island to the trees and one which I've put down marginally here I'm gonna sit on my feeder rod a nice night tip uh, after hours uh, for a few hours just to see if we get anything the plan is to wake up nice and early on the second day just to get on top of the tench again. As typically, we all know, they are evening and early morning 
feeders. So fingers crossed, you know, early days still, we've had a good amount of fish. We're really pleased from our first try here at Chickborough. The amount we've caught so far, you know, we were doubting ourselves at the start. We made the right decision, as you do. Uh, when fishing a new venue, have we chosen the right spot? Have we even chosen the right lake? Um, we've actually met the bailiffs, really friendly people. Thumbs up to you guys if you ever watch this. <laughs> uh, and I believe they're filming on a on a different lake tonight as well. So they've filled us with confidence too. Um, a chap here had 15 tench out of this very swim. So hopefully more to show you over the next however many, many hours left. I'm sure we're not even halfway yet and uh, for a cold uh, March day, I don't think we've done too bad. Brave the elements. So, carp tactics tonight. Like I said, I've got, well, I've got cell boilie on one. I've actually tried two mini wafters just down this margin to the left. So, fingers crossed. I believe Carl is beefing up his tactics, so he's gonna be using three carp rods, perhaps whittle down tactics, just to see if there's any tension there, of course. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll show you a carp or two. We did notice some boshing earlier, right tight against the uh, tree line. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed, there's still more to come. Cool. Nice one. What did we say, seven pound brie? Yeah. Seven pound brie, not bad. Made the carp rod go off for a little while, didn't it? So nothing much happened throughout the night, just one dream, woke up about 20 to 1, but I woke up nice and early, quarter past five, sun is coming up, as you can hear the birds are singing, beautiful, hopefully I'm going to get back on the tent and swim again, I raked with my net just around this tree here just to start the silt that's the sun was there. I put a little bit of bait out, a bit of hemp, a bit of soaked pellet. Fishing a few segments of worm again, put some chopped worm in the feed, inside the metal feeder, tension to roll further out. And fingers crossed we can get some early morning tench. Well, my bite alarm screamed, well not screamed, not beeped off to another bream. That was right tight against the, the island, probably two foot depth, and that just went crazy right. I love bream, but on heavy carp rods, they don't do much at all as you know. So let's get her back, let's hope for a carp, and I'll come back to you if we get any more. literally switch from worm to maggot it goes to show that change can make all the difference been out there about two minutes beautiful absolutely 
go with this. All females. It's quite rare to find to catch all female tench. So here we are again. Absolutely cracker. Around the same size once again. Beautiful early morning tench. Look at her showing off the fin there. Absolutely gorgeous. Gotta be if someone put me up against the wall and said, What's your favourite fish? This right here. Look at her. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see if we can get another. And now the carp rod's going. I think it's another bream. Oh, it's stopped now. It was going crazy for a second. Ten minutes later, we have another. It's gone right under that tree. Just setting up my carp rod again after the bream I missed. Screamed off. Gone into the snag when I'm trying to turn him. There we go, we've got him out. Is it going to be finally a male? Scrap right to the last minute these. Beautiful. Another female. <laughs> Again, about the same size. Bit of a deformed mouth this one, so it's going to be caught many times. That was a bit tricky to get that out, but nonetheless, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Real good fun on light tackle. Really gorgeous fish. See, he's been hooked a few, few times this one, she has. But look at that. Still stunning. That massive paddle tail. You can't beat it. Let's get it back, see if we can get another one. We're certainly on it this morning. A cup of coffee. Stone cold now, I feel that. <laughs> That's worth it. Here we go again. Oh my god, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant short succession. Really come hard and fast this country. Will it finally be a male? We'll see. Hopefully. Isn't that carp line there making my 
Bob and go a bit crazy, but we're out. She's a bit bigger. We'll weigh her uh, probably only by a pound or so, but certainly bigger. Another another female spot here. Let's get her in the sling there. Luckily everything's soaking wet from all the rain and a few fish I've been having. <laughs> Let's get the scales. Alright, let's see what she goes. Most average have been about five pounds. That's coming for an eight pound. These fish are really, I've zeroed the scales, ladies and gents, I'm no beginner when it comes to zero and scales, but these fish, I mean that to me, perhaps doesn't look eight pound, but I can tell you she is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Can't say much about my hair, but the fish is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Let's get her back and get another. just rolled out there they're certainly in here and they're hungry oh no it's a catfish you stay away from them tension catfish guys and gals so a typical feeder rod this is a sonic feeder rod and then I've made a mix of soaked pellets that have been soaking in strawberry sweet corn liquid uh, hemp oil out of the can bits of hemp in there and bits of chopped caster and a, a fairly let's get all the last tench lime off it you know about a six inch uh, fluorocarbon with a 14 hook and a nice big bunch of juicy maggots Let's get that out there, see if we can get another quick fish. And all I'm doing is chucking a handful of maggots over the top and all over my arm if I'm out there. Well, I thought it was all over after the catfish entered my swim, but we've got another, you guessed it, female tent. Look at that. 
what a chunk that one is. Ooh. Let's give her a quick weigh, because that's a very wide fish. I love how they erect their dorsal fins, just to give you a little bit of a show there on camera. Let's give her a quick weigh then. I have to say, this is coming the best tent session I've ever done. But let's see how she goes. Seven pound, 11 ounces. What a beauty, what an absolutely beautiful fish. One more time, what a chunk. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's get back. Again, fell to a bunch of red maggots. So let's get that out there again. Well, as the session draws to a close, I think we can safely say me and Carl have had a good time. Uh, Carl's had an inordinate amount of bream, um, all real good size. We are really impressed by the fish size, the average of the tension bream. Uh, sadly, no carp, but there has been a few caught, and the rest of the lake is very pressured. Um, someone's just walked around and going to go and swim next to me, because he said, Usually fish is the main part of the lake, but there's just not a swim free. So considering the pressure, you know, I don't think we've done too bad. So I really want to thank you if you've watched all the way to the end for stopping in. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tent action that I was able to provide you. Uh, if you've never fished here before, give it a go, especially if you like the tent. But there is also a good head of carp. There is a lake behind as well, which uh, apparently got a lot of tension to. So yeah, come down, give it a try. Uh, the staff are really lovely, everyone we've met is nice, the people we've talked to here is nice, uh, which makes it, you know, even better, isn't it? So, thanks again for tuning in. Keep your eyes peeled for further videos. We're going to be targeting sturgeon this year, so keep, keep, keep a look out for that video upcoming. We've never caught a sturgeon before, so we want to share that with you. Tight lines on your next trip, and thanks for stopping